Now that's what a good vape is supposed to look like. Uh, this is our flagship and uh, it's mounted with a pro tank and it gives some of the greatest uh, vapes that I've ever had. So we're going to talk a little bit today about coil troubleshooting because they're generally speaking they take less maintenance than than other things but you still have to know what things to do when you clean them and set them up that will get you on a, a proper path because if not you're going to run into no vapes you're going to run into leaks you're going to run into gurgles and how do we take care of that so uh, this I brought out because I wanted to show you if you look really closely between the tank and the body itself you see there is actual space between there. You see a little better now. And there, as I tighten it all the way down, you'll see that it's fully seated, but there's still a gap in there that all that is drawing air. Air is the lifeblood of vaping, and you need to keep it coming and keep it coming smoothly. So, uh, T3S. Probably takes a little more finesse to keep going, um, but if you know the right tricks when you clean it, it's just a, a one, two, three. So um, we'll start here with the T3S. T3S, you have the tank body, you have the base, and with the base you have two separate O-rings, and then you have your coil. So on the coil, it also has an O-ring here, and make sure that the wick material that's in there fully fills that square. If you have gaps in there, it's time to get yourself a new coil. So, in transportation and shipping, these all these O-rings have a tendency to really settle in and when they've got pressure against them the entire time, they're going up in planes and down in planes. And so, and even during use, you need to stop when you go and clean this and you set it up again. And for lack of a better phrase, re-fluff those O-rings and make them stick out again. So, on the coil, let's start there at the base. We've got a brand new here coil here. Take your fingernail, and between the coil and the base that it's against, just bring it out a little bit. You'll see it's actually separated a little bit from there. And just roll it back. And that's fluffed and ready to go. So, the base. Let's start with the base O-ring here. I'm going to get this one up. We're going to take this top one right off there, set it to the side, don't lose it. And we're going to pull this O-ring off just like we did the other one. Rub your fingernail in there. This one's a little tougher, but once you get it started, you generally can just roll it off there. Generally. I'll show you why that sticks in there. I'm just going to take it to the edge right here. You see the diamond cut base part with the holes in it? Those are air holes that bring air up into the coil and out through the mouthpiece. Then you have a little edge that's sticking out there and then the threads. This O-ring has a tendency to settle underneath that edge there and especially after it's been uh, screwed in completely for long periods of time. So you want to take that, pull it out, and just put it right back. Now, you can put it all the way back to where it's supposed to be, all the way against that base. I have a tendency to leave mine off a little bit if I can, but you see it sits much fuller inside there. So now we're gonna move on to this edge right here. And you see that there's also a little lip inside that where that other O-ring sits. It too has a tendency to settle inside there. So let's put this back on here. And you notice that this is a flat shaped one and not a round shaped one. Here's why that's important. When you put this on, take your fingernail and again run around the edge and make sure that that flat piece of the O-ring sits flat against that ledge. And that's how it should look before you put your coil in and before you put the base in the tank. Coil's already been fluffed. This has been fluffed and reset. Get your coil inside. And you see that coil, actually I don't even have it, that, that O-ring on here, I don't even have it set in there all the way. I'm going to let it do itself and create a tight, tight seal. Nice and tight. You're not going to over-tighten that one. 
Your favorite Pythian liquid. This is our latest flavor, uh, Cuban cigar. It is hearty, to say the least. Fill in your tank. Now, I did take both of these and dip them out in my bowl of alcohol and then just let them sit on a paper towel for 20 minutes, shake them off a little bit at 10 and let them sit another 10. Um, and it cleans off anything you might ever have in there. As long as it's dry, you're not going to have an issue when you're starting. Shake your liquids. Nicotine have a tendency to settle and start filling your tank. T3S tanks, uh, CE4 tanks, all of them. I'm a big believer. Fill them about three quarters of the way. That's as far as you ever really want to fill them. They have a tendency to flood uh, all tanks uh, if you get them just completely full. Got my base ready to go in. You notice that the round O-ring at the base is out and ready. The second one is flat. The O-ring that sits on the top of the coil is set flat and square. Into your tank, nice and square, and start it in. Now, again, metal to metal, always hold that. Helps you avoid cracking your tanks, especially on the CE4s. And just till it tightens and that's it. You'll know, because it won't go any further. That's as far as the screws go. Nice and tight. All right. Let it sit for a minute, let the coil saturate. While you're doing that, I'm going to put another little reminder here about always cleaning your battery. This is where 90% of problems come into with people, is not cleaning that post on the inside there. Take your paper towel, fold it over, stick it in, and wipe out the inside. Every time you clean, every day you should clean. You see what it comes off of that? Every, you've got two pieces of metal conducting electricity, you've got an open tube uh, with liquid, you're going to have a soot in there every single day. So, here's our tank that we just did. And it seems it doesn't take very long to saturate. You put these on, always grab metal to metal. And turn this just till you feel it, it will stop. And once it stops, then you've reached the end of those threads. Now, back it off just a hair. That creates a more air to flow up through the base of that, up through the coil and out the mouthpiece, creating a stronger vape. So, uh, I always like to fire it a couple of times. You hear it, you check it, you see that it's, it's it's active, and the firing of that draws the juice into the coil, helps saturate it. Not a bad first vape, there's more there. And still more there. One of the big problems people have is they tend to over tighten these. So. If it is too tight, you're going to have less of a vape, sometimes no vape at all. Um, loosen up just a hair. Still got active. That's getting better. That's more like it. Getting better. So, overfilling it. That will flood the tank. Uh, screwing it on too tight will block off the tank. Um, when people hit it, a lot of times they tend to hold here and wrap their fingers around this. You do that, you're cutting off the vents, these little holes in the diamond cut part to get air into the coil. A lot of times what that will do is the, co the coil will not fire near as hard and you'll drag fluid right into the tip of it and you'll get a gurgling sound. Very common. Um, take your piece of your paper towel again Fold it up. If you have a gurgling in there, right in there, move it around, and you should have, and we don't have any in there, but if you have oil in there, it will be on that, and you'll be able to see it pretty clearly. So let's try this again. And that's how a T3S is supposed to smoke. As always, if you have more questions, uh, email us, info at Pentheon Vapors, and we'll be glad to answer any questions we can. Uh, other than that, just keep it clean, keep it uh, start from scratch, 
and you'll have a great vape. Thanks very much.